How do you talk about your job confidently in English? Let's find out. Hello, this is Keith from the Keith Speaking Academy and the YouTube channel English Speaking Success, helping you speak better English, give better answers and get a higher score on IELTS speaking. So today in this video, we're going to look at some great expressions to help you talk confidently and naturally about your job in English. We will be looking at looking for a job, and what to say in your job interview, responsibilities and the skills needed in your job, um, talking about being busy and also changing your job. I will also show you a great resource that you can use to practice these expressions and lots of other expressions on this topic. The resource is called, well, it's a mobile phone app and it's called Elsa Speak and it's the perfect tool to perfect your pronunciation as well as to build your fluency and confidence, right? More about that later. Oh, and I almost forgot. Stay around to the end of the video because I'm going to give you my top six interview preparation techniques how to prepare for a job interview, what you should be doing, my top six tips. Stay to the end of the video to get that extra bonus. Right now, let's jump straight in and start looking for a job. So looking for a job usually begins with you sending your CV or resume, and then hopefully you get a job interview. And here are some useful things you can say in the interview. Very often, right, the, uh, the person interviewing will ask you, why do you want this job? And you say, well, I need the money. <laughs> Well, no, you can't say that, right? You need to say something a bit more creative. <clears throat> so you could say, I think I'm a good fit for this job. I'm a good fit for something. To be a good fit is when two things go well together, right? A bit like coffee and chocolate. Mm, they are a good fit, right? Pronunciation. Repeat with me, fit for, good fit for, a good fit for. I think I'm a good fit for this job. Lovely, nice expression. A similar expression is, I think I'm a good match for this job. Similar kind of thing, okay? An even cooler expression is, I think this job suits me down to the ground. It suits me means it matches me, right? Coffee, chocolate. <laughs> uh, but it suits me down to the ground means it's perfect for me, right? You probably don't want to say it's my dream job. Hmm, that's a bit airy fairy. But this job, I think this job suits me down to the ground. Nice. You may also want to say, well, I think this job ties in well with my future plans. Ties in well, great expression. It means basically it connects, right? To tie is when you take some string and you tie, you tie a knot, right? And uh, if you tie a knot, here me and my sailor skills, scouts, <laughs> you tie a knot. So it ties in well, it connects. So this job ties in well with my future plans. Maybe you want to talk about, you want to develop as a manager or become a better leader. Those are your plans, your ambitions, and this job ties in well with that future or with those plans or with those ambitions. Of course, you also want to say what you can give to the company. So you might say, I'm excited to showcase my skills. Showcase is to show, and I'm excited. It's always good, right, to say you're excited, right? You don't want to say, I want to, which is a bit boring, or I would like to, which is a bit polite. 
I'm excited to showcase my skills. Your excitement will generate excitement with the interviewer as well. Another nice expression is, I'm eager to make a contribution. I'm eager to make a contribution. To be eager is to be keen or enthusiastic. Okay, I'm eager to make a contribution. Say with me, I'm eager to make, I'm eager to make, I'm eager to make a contribution. That's it. It goes back to um, J.F. Kennedy, right? Think or ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. It's the same idea. Companies love it when you're like, how can I help you? Uh, how can I, you know, I'm eager to contribute, not just to take things away like your money and my salary. <clears throat> Similarly, you could say, I'm sure I could bring a lot to this job. I'm sure I could bring a lot to this job. The idea you're bringing your skill set, your attitude, um, your ability, all your skill, you know, all the good things you can bring to the job. Nice expression. Bring a lot to this job. I can bring a lot to this job. Repeat. Lovely. Finally, we have the expression, I never shy away from hard work. Now, to shy away, well, to be shy, right, is all timid, right? Here's the hard work, right? If, you're, if you shy away from hard work, it means you don't want to look at it. So you have to say the opposite. I never shy away from hard work, which is a lovely way to say I, I like getting my hands dirty. I'm very happy to work hard, which is what companies want to hear, right? Whether it's true or not doesn't matter. <laughs> but of course, say things that sincerely believe, right? I never shy away from hard work. Shy away from. Repeat, shy away from. I never shy away from hard work. It's true, really. Listen, those are some great expressions you can be using in your job interview. Stick around to the end. I'm going to give you some tips about how to prepare for a job interview. But right now, let's move on to the next bit, which is all about activities at work. So you've got the job, or as we say in English, you've landed the job. To land a job is to get a job. I've landed the job. Congratulations. Well done. So now in your job, you're going to be talking about what you do, right? Your responsibilities and duties, and maybe also about your skills, what you're good at, and maybe what you're not so good at. Whoops, <laughs> need to improve. Let's begin with some simple phrases and then move on to some more advanced ones. So beginning simple. Well, let's imagine you work in the marketing department. That's your your job. So you could say, I'm responsible for setting the marketing goals. I'm responsible for something. Very simple, right? I, you can say with a noun or a verb in the gerund. With a noun, I'm responsible for marketing as a noun. Or I'm responsible for setting our marketing goals. Great. What are you responsible for? Ah, Nice. Similarly, you can say I'm in charge of, in charge of something, right? You control that. I'm in charge of marketing or I'm in charge of setting our marketing goals. I'm in charge of making the marketing strategy. OK, so remember, I'm in charge of becomes I'm in charge of. Bum. What are you in charge of? Good. Now, a more informal way of saying that, your responsibilities, you can say, it's down to me to set our marketing goals. It's down to me to do something, which means it's down to me. It's my responsibility. It's down to me to set our marketing goals. It's down to me to reach our marketing goals. Right. Could you say something? It's down to me to...
great. You see, this is a great expression, even if you're a homemaker, right? It's down to me to make sure the, the dinner is cooked or the house is clean or the children are taken to school <laughs> and things like that. Now, if you want to talk about your skills, of course, you can say, well, I'm good at this. I'm good at that. Another nice way is to say my forte is da 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 da. Right. Forte coming from the Latin, meaning strength, something you're strong at. So maybe you say, well, my forte is making creative graphics. What's your forte? My forte is making videos or synonym. I excel at Excel like the spreadsheet. Yeah, I excel at making creative graphics. I excel at, can you say, I excel at? I excel at teaching English, even if I say so myself. <laughs> He's blowing his own trumpet. Stop that. I excel at cr making creative graphics. What about you? Fantastic. Great. Lovely. Some nice expressions to talk about responsibilities and skills. Let's move on. Now, when you're practicing phrases and expressions like this, it's always great to have a good model to imitate so you're getting the pronunciation right. Now, you can imitate me, of course, but if I'm not here, then you need something else. A great tool is this one, is Elsa Speak, right? Elsa Speak is a mobile um, app. It helps you build not only pronunciation, but also build your vocabulary and confidence as you're speaking, right? I'm just going to show you very quickly what you've got inside here and how it works. As you come in, the one of the first things you can do actually is find your level. It gives you a test to see how good your pronunciation is so you know where to focus. Nice. These are the different kind of skills we've got. Mixed skills, linking sounds, intonation, dropping consonants. Um, different vowel sounds, ending sounds. Fantastic. Great. Now, you've also got lots of topics to practice with. Um, let's have a look, right? What we've got here, actually, work and career. What we've been talking about, jobs, right? So in a different topic, let's take one here, changing careers. Okay. So you can practice pronunciation first at the word level, then at the phrase level, then at the conversation level. Brilliant. Let's take some medium level phrases. I want to change my career. See how it works. So it basically says the word and then or the sentence and you have to repeat it. If you want it to go more slowly, you can do this. I want to change my career. Let me try, but with a mistake. I want to change my carer. And it tells me I got carer, especially the last part, I mispronounced it, right? If I press that, it gives me a breakdown of the individual phonemes and what I said and how it should be said. So I can just listen to that word again. Career. 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 Got it. Let's listen to the whole thing. I want to change my career. And I'll try again. I want to change my career. Yay, much better. Excellent. Fantastic. That's how it works on lots of different levels, all aspects of pronunciation. The AI behind it is really good. Um, and I think it's a great way to practice both pronunciation and vocabulary. Now, um, Elsa have been ever so kind. They are sponsoring this video. And so that means they're offering some discounts for you as my students. So you can sign up for a year long membership and get 30% discount. Brilliant. However, if you sign up for a lifetime membership, you get 80% discount. What? Yes, 80% off a lifetime membership. And then if I'm not around, You've got Elsa in your pocket for the rest of your life. Guaranteed better pronunciation. It's great. Go and check it out. There are links down below. You can download it, start to have a go with it, feel if you like it or not, and then you can sign up. 
Lovely, let's move on. Okay, so you've applied for a job, you've landed the job, you've started working, you're telling the world about your responsibilities, and then you realize working life is actually all about being busy. <laughs> and it's terrible when you're a newbie because then the company expects more and you're trying to prove yourself by working really hard, right? You don't shy away from hard work when you're a newbie. Here are some useful expressions to describe when you're busy, right? I'm snowed under with work. Great idiomatic expression. The imagine the snow is piling up and you're under the snow with your work. I'm snowed under with work. Similarly, you can say, I've got a lot on my plate at the moment. To have a lot on your plate is to have a lot of work, right? It's literally the plate. You can imagine having too much food. That's a lot on your plate. But it really means I've got too much on my desk, too much work. I've got a lot on my plate lately. Also, in work, you'll notice you get deadlines, the time you have to finish or the date you must finish your work. And you may end up saying, probably, <laughs> I'm up to my neck in deadlines. I'm up to my neck in deadlines, right? Here are the deadlines. You can hardly swim and stay above water. I'm up to my neck in deadlines. Great. Now then, two other expressions in a, in a similar way. Um, when people have to work a lot, sometimes we say, I work overtime to make ends meet. This is a very particular situation where if you're not making enough money and you need to make more money to survive the month, then we say, well, I, I work hard or I work overtime to make ends meet. To make ends meet is to make the end of the month meet the beginning of the month, to have enough money to survive at the end of the month. So it's about having enough money to make ends meet is to have enough money to survive. So you may say, I work overtime to make ends meet. Or I work extra shifts to make ends meet. If you work shifts, some people work in shifts like doctors and nurses, um, sometimes construction workers, security guards. You work the day shift or the night shift. I work some extra shifts to make ends meet. Corporate life, working life, it's all about being busy, getting stressed out. Great, can't wait. <laughs> Let's move on. So after years of working and being busy, you may decide at some point to change your job, right? Just to leave and get a new job. And it seems that job hopping is very popular nowadays when you hop from one job to another. It seems to be almost a new trend. When I was growing up, people would work in the same job for five, 10, 20 years. But, you know, things are changing now and the days of having a contract for life are quickly disappearing. It's much more common. People will work maybe for six months and then move to another job. Job hopping has a negative connotation, like it's not a good thing. But for many people, it is good, right? Maybe you leave your job because you don't like it, but maybe you leave because you just want to develop your skills and move up to the next level. So there are different reasons. Let's look at some expressions to talk about why you change your job. First of all, some reasons because you're not happy, right? So you may say, well, I'm stuck in a rut. I'm stuck, you can't move. In a rut is a bad, is a hole, a bad situation. So you may say, I'm stuck in a rut. Can you say, in a rut, stuck in a rut. I'm stuck in a rut. Nice. Also, you could say, 
I'm not realizing my potential. I'm not realizing my potential in this job, right? So you've got potential, the ability to do something good in the future, but you're not realizing your potential. It's not happening. You don't have the opportunity to show your talent, right? So you may say, you know, in this job, I'm just not realizing my potential. I can do so much more. <laughs> Similarly, you could say, I've got untapped potential. I want to do so much more and this job doesn't let me. I've got untapped potential. Potential, future ability, right? Untapped is it's blocked. It's not open. Have you got untapped potential? I'm sure you have. Yes. Now, so those are some kind of phrases when you're not happy with your job. Other phrases which are maybe more neutral, right? So you may want to say, I want to make a career change. And this is not only changing your job, but it's changing the direction of your profession and your career. So maybe you're an engineer and you decide, I actually want to go into teaching. I want to become a teacher. That's a career change, right? I want to make a career change. Can you say that? Stress career. I want to make a career change. Nice, good. Or you may quite simply say, it's time to move on. It's time to move on, move on. Very simple, right? Um, elaborating a bit, it's time to move on to a new challenge. It's a good expression because sometimes in job interviews, right, people say, well, why did you leave your old job? Well, they were rubbish. I mean, <laughs> don't say that, right? You want something more neutral or positive, right? Well, it was just time to move on to a new challenge. Great. Lovely. Very, very nice. Let's move on. So as promised, um, I've got some interview tips for you. Six things you can do in your interview or before your interview to get ready, right? Number one, number one, <laughs> number one, do your homework. And I mean, find out about the company. Go to the website, their social media, if they've got an annual report, find out what they do and really understand their vision, their mission, their values. Do your homework. Number two, use the words that the company uses. So what I mean is, if you look at a company and they have, normally they have a vision or values or a mission, and it may be something like, we're, we are an innovative startup looking for creative people who can make an impact on society. Look at the words they use. And when you're speaking, try and use the same words because this helps you mirror the person, which helps you build rapport with them, right? So if you're in the interview saying, well, I'm really, you know, I've been looking for a job with an innovative company for a long time. I, I feel I'm a very creative person, right? And I, I, I think I just want to make an impact on society. And you're using the same words they're using, it will ring a bell with them and they'll they'll start thinking, oh, this person suits us down to the ground. They are a good fit for us, right? Don't make it too obvious. Don't read out the mission statement, but just be aware of some key words that they use. Number three, focus on your ability more than your qualification. Everybody has a degree, a master's degree. So many people have PhDs. Qualifications are good, but they don't make you different. What makes you different is your ability. So talk about the skills you've got, the, the talent you've got, and the things you've done that prove you've got those skills. Number four, focus on giving as well as taking. Remember what we talked about earlier. So you're not in the interview just saying, well, I want this and I want that, I want that. But I can contribute this. I can bring this skill set to the job. I can, I can give, right? Focus on that giving. Companies love that. Of course they do. Next one, choose as well as be chosen. Do remember the job interview is not only them choosing you, it's you choosing them. You want to choose the right job for you. So make sure that it's a two-way thing, that you are also evaluating them, 
right? Finally, ask good questions. This ties in to some of the other points, right? So often at the end of the interview, they, they will ask, do you, do you want to ask us anything? Um, and some people go, well, yeah, well, how much do I get paid? When, what, are, what holidays do I get? Um, are there any fringe benefits? <laughs> take, take, take. <laughs> no, think about giving, right? Think about understanding the company. So asking a good question is, is all about you understanding the company and showing that you want to make a contribution. Here's a good question, right? So when you've chosen the candidate, what will success look like? And they will, they'll, they will then tell you what they want the candidate to do. In that job, this person will do this, they'll do that, and they'll achieve this. And that's great because you then have got a clear idea what they really want and if that matches you. But also, you've shown your intelligence by asking a really good question because the interviewer is thinking, oh, they want to understand success. They want to make sure that they can be successful. It's a cracking question. <laughs> cracking, very good. It's a cracking question. What will success look like? Right, those are my top six interview tips. If you're looking for a job, good luck. I hope it all works out. I think you'll do a cracking job. Lovely. Brilliant. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. So I've been helping you in your job interview with language and tips, talking about, you know, your activities, responsibilities, how busy you are and how finally you decide to change your job. Lots of expressions. Remember, the key is in the practice. So go away and start practicing. Do go and check out below the link to download Elsa app. Lots of language and expressions, many, many more that you can be practicing around the topic of work and jobs, as well as lots of other stuff. And do remember, if you sign up for a, a one year membership, you get 30% off. A lifetime membership, you get 80% off. It's going for a song. Go and check it out. Start practicing and take your English right up to the next level. Great. It's been great being here with you, my friends. Please do remember to subscribe, turn on notifications, and I will see you in the next video. Take care now. Bye bye.